Welcome back to the channel. Today we have another fun project and if you stick around till after the break I'll tell you all about it. Welcome back. Today we've got a really fun project. People have been asking me about jewelry boxes, so we're going to go ahead and make one today. So if you want to stick around till after this little break, then um, I'll take you through it step by step. So stay with me. Okay, today I'm going to take this apple gourd. I've had it for a little while, so it's already clean. But I'm going to take it and I'm going to make a jewelry box out of it. And one of the first things that I need to do, it's a little wobbly, it doesn't sit completely flat. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put three little feet on the bottom of it with my wood um, epoxy putty. And just for the sake of not making another really long video, um, I'm going to do that off camera real quick and then I'll bring you right back. Okay, I've got the feet on it. And I have set it down on the table to make sure that it was sitting the way I wanted it to. So I'm just smoothing them out just a little bit. And, um, and I'm going to let it sit and cure. It needs about 60 minutes to cure. So we're going to set it over here. And we're going to let those cure for just a little bit. And then we'll be right back for the next part. Okay, the feet have dried. They've hardened considerably. And um, it's time for the next step. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hinge on it. Let's see. I'll put the hinge on the back. The first thing that I need to do is make a line all the way around. And one of the easiest ways that I've found to do that is use pencil and a stack of books. See, that when you do that, it makes a really nice level line, and you go all the way around. So the next thing that I want to do is decide where I want the hinge. So I'll put it back here on back, back here. Okay, when you put a hinge on, you want to lay it over the line and mark it. Okay, make sure your marks are on there really good. Okay, and the reason that we're going to do this is we're going to actually just cut this piece here you, know, you want to go out just a little bit further. But we're going to cut that piece before we cut the rest of it. We're going to cut that out and then we're going to actually go ahead and attach the hinge to it before we even cut the rest of it. So give me just a minute and um, I'll get my Dremel and I'll cut this piece. I can tell <clears throat> that one's going to have a really hard shell on it. But you want to cut past it 
so that when you come back to cut the other piece, you can just start there instead of having to try to butt it all the way up against the hinge. But let me get ready, and I'm going to go ahead and get everything to, to put the hinge on. So give me just a minute. Okay, I'm going to lay it on here, and I'm going to mark where I want... the screws to go in. Uh, I, what I'm going to do next, um, I'm going to, just for the sake of putting the screws in a little easier, I'm going to take the X-Acto knife and I'm going to score that where I want that screw to go in. Okay, I'm going to get this last little screw all the way in here, and then um, I'm going to set up to go ahead and uh, cut the rest of the way around. Um, there we go. Alright. Well, I'm going to get everything set up so I can finish making this cut, and um, I'll put a break in here so that Mark can put some music in there, so maybe it's not quite as loud. So give me a minute. I'll be right back. I guess I'm going to have to change that blade out. Be right back. Well, that one was a little difficult to cut, but let's pop it open and see what's inside. Oh, it's smoking a little bit. Oh, well, that's about perfect. That's funny. I might have to keep that. All right. And there would be my broken dermal bit. There's the inside. And um, I'll go around and before I paint it and I'll sand the edge just a little bit. You can see the screws went all the way through. I was kind of worried that the screws wouldn't go all the way through, but they did. So what I'll do is I'll get a little bit of the epoxy putty and I'll cover those so nobody scratches themselves. So... Hang on, and I'll be right back. Okay, I sanded down the edges a bit, and um, I'm going to get this ready to take out and paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush it out a bit with a Brillo pad. It's mostly just to get anything loose from the inside because on this one I'm going to paint the inside of it too. So, let me run outside and get a little paint on it and I'll be right back. Okay, we've got it all painted and I put a coat of sealer on it and um, I painted the inside and I put little pieces of the wood epoxy on there so that the, the little 
sharp points on the screws for the hinge didn't snag anything or cut anybody and our feet are all painted and they're all dry so we're ready for the next step and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line the bottom with fabric so I'm going to show you an easy way to cut a piece of fabric to fit the bottom of a bowl. We're going to take a paper towel and push it all the way in. And we're going to fold the edges over. going to take a sharpie and we're going to go around the edge and we're going to mark where the paper towel reaches over the edge I know it doesn't seem very technical but it is better than doing a lot of math so we're going to take that out finish drawing in any you know, little gaps and it's not going to be perfect but you have a basic circle here Move the camera back I'm not getting a very good angle here right. and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another mark just about a quarter of an inch or so outside of that um, so I can fold it over when I go to pin it in there. So, for better or for worse, we have a nearly a circle, but I'm going to go ahead and cut this out, and I'm going to pin it to some fabric, and I'm going to cut the fabric to this size, and I'll be right back. Okay, now I've got my fabric cut, and um, the first thing I'm going to do before I put the fabric in here is I'm going to put some cotton balls in the bottom of it. Just a few in here to add you know, a little softness and a little fluff underneath the paper, underneath the fabric. And you might see that bottle sitting back there. We're going to take a few drops of this apple cinnamon, and I'm going to put it in the cotton balls. You, know, you can use anything you want, your favorite perfume, anything. I'm just going to. Put a few drops. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to turn them over so they're, the wet part of them isn't sticking up right where the fabric is going to be. All right, so I'm going to start pinning this fabric in here. I'm going to use these little tiny clothespins. And um, I'm going to put a break in here because it's going to take me a little while to do it. So maybe Mark could fast forward through it a little bit. So hold on.
now I've got the fabric pinned in here about where I want it. Um, and don't forget, crafting is like anything else. It's an illusion. You can make any, any changes that you need along the way, too. So I'm going to get my hot glue gun set up, and I'll be right back. Okay, now I've got the fabric laid in it, and you can see with the cotton balls in the bottom, it's nice and soft. But the last thing that we're going to do, um, I left the stem natural. I covered it when I was painting it, so I made a bow, and I tied it onto this pair of scissors so that it would have a spot that I could slip down over the stem. So if you give me just a minute, I'm going to slip this on, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I slipped the bow on, and I attached it with some hot glue in the back, and I put a few wrinkles in it, and I attached them, and I don't know if you can tell, but that's memory wire in the edge. But that's it. It's all done. And it's just a simple, fun, a little time consuming. But they're a lot of fun to make. And they're really easy. So just one fun project. Hello again. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. We had a whole lot of fun making this. And um, just to show you that gourd art can be just as fancy or just as simple as you want it to be. And uh, jewelry boxes are a lot of fun to make. But don't forget that if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. If you enjoyed my video, give it a thumbs up. And um, don't forget to ring that little bell so you get a notification when we have new videos coming out. And I hope you enjoy this video. And um, oh, and don't forget to leave me a comment or a question. I like questions too. But anyway, I got to get going. I'm going to set up for another one here before too long. So we'll see you in the next one.